what is going on guys welcome back to tdm productions i am tdm mitchell and today we're going to be talking about enzymes i'd imagine you already know what they are so let's just jump right into it so basically as you probably know in the world there are many different ways to use enzymes but today we're going to be focusing on one specific area that they can be used in which is the beer making process i'd imagine you're here either for your personal gain personal knowledge school seeing what else enzymes can do, or the exact same project I'm doing, which is the beer dip production and how enzymes are used. So essentially, on the screen, I'm going to have three different columns of the seven different points uh, and parts it goes through before you get the end product of beer. The steps include the mill, mash mixer, launcher ton, brew kettle, fermenter, aging tank, and finishing tank. Uh, with this, you have the helps of rough of enzymes and there are roughly nine stages depending on how you do it some companies uh do less some companies do more but the main way is with these nine uh so they go through the process of melting milling and mashing laudering hopping fermentation conditioning filtering and canning or bottling so with this we already have two of the three and the last column we have will be the enzymes that are used or can be used in this process. So here we have uh, sort of six, I mean sort of seven. Uh, you have alpha and beta amylase, B galactanase, fungal A amylase, protease, A acetolatate decarboxylase. That one's hard to say, but so we will use it as ALDC. And finally, ME. Logalucidice. I completely butchered this name so I imagine you can get it correctly or already know what it is. So quickly write that with a little chart down. We'll note it off as we go through this power, uh, not PowerPoint video. We'll go through it. We'll keep going back. We'll go back to it and mark down which we've done and we'll refer back to it at the end and see what we get. So first we're going to be starting off with the malting process. On screen, you see this diagram. This is actually a barley seed, which is what you start off with in the malting process. But not just one seed, you have roughly thousands upon thousands of these seeds. Looking at this diagram, you can see that there is, in fact, enzymes there. It only says alpha uh, amylase, but there is also beta amylase in there as well. But we'll get, we'll get into those later. Right now, we're just going to go through the process of the beer making with maybe a little bit mention of the enzymes. So, uh, you see this, this is barley seed, as I mentioned before. This goes through the process of germination prior to it going into the mill. So what this entails of is it is soaked in water roughly for three days and then dried and roasted to the point where it is roughly no smaller than two millimeters as it has just enough moisture and proteins in it after this process. In more specific terms, it's going through a sort of three-step process of stepping at roughly 16 degrees Celsius, then germination at roughly 18 degrees Celsius, and kilning roughly 50 to 110 degrees Celsius. This process is done by using water, heat, and the help of enzymes. So even though only germination was used, that's what they mainly focused on. The other two are considered part of germination. It's just referred to as that one uh, term. So after this, they are essentially just mar malted barley seeds. Uh, malt is then sent to the mill, the next stage of the beer process, where the grains are cracked, which help releases the starch inside the malt. So next we have the mash mixer. With this, you introduce the starch that has come to be from the milling process and you add hot water to this. Essentially, when you do this, it looks like a porridge-like substance called malt homogeneity. Going back to this diagram of barley seed, you see that you have the alpha amylase as well as the beta amylase. I'll probably just draw that back in there so you don't get confused. Um, so these are activated by the warm water. When you add it to the milling process, there's hot water, not hot enough to denature the proteins um, of the enzymes, but enough so that it activates the enzymes to help break down the endosperm to release the starch and therefore make it into simple sugars, uh, or just, as you know, them, carbohydrates, which is done with the help of other enzymes, but we'll get into those later, as I said before. So next, 
the brew. So the brew is essentially what you get from the milling when, uh, after it's done reacting, all the enzymes are done breaking it down into simple molecules, which dissolves into the water. And next, that goes into the long return, which is essentially um, where the grains are filtered from the sugar solution during the mashing phase. What is produced from the separation is called wort. Is it essentially the part that you end up drinking? It just gets rid of all the barley seeds that are still there or the malt. Um, and it just separates the two. So you have this one liquid. So after the wort is extracted from the lottering turn, it is then sent to the brew kettle. It is boiled to a certain point depending on the type of beer. Um, if it's light beard, it'll be boiled, but not for a certain amount of time. It, it varies depending on the beer. Once it is boiled, hops are added. Uh, I'll add a picture on screen of what hops are. They're essentially the flavor to the beer as spices would be to a steak or a fancy meal. It's essentially the appealing factor that makes it better and desirable for people. After it's mixed while boiling, it's later cooled and moved to the fermentation tank. In the formation tank, yeast is added to the wort, which is roughly 10% sugar at this point. The yeast essentially, to put it simply, it eats the wort sugar, and from this, it releases alcohol and carbon dioxide. In some cases, carbon dioxide is released and separated, or sometimes it is kept in the beer, depending on the beer you drink. After this, it's sit and ages, and then it's prepared for bottling or canning. I know you're all dying to know what happened to the other enzymes. I mentioned at the beginning, alpha and beta uh, amylase were mentioned briefly, but we'll get into the process. Now that we know the process uh, and steps to beer making, let's get more into the enzymes that go into this. So let's start off with alpha and beta amylase since we already briefly touched on this. It's already in your mind. You already got it going. So these are used in two parts of the process, the malting and mashing. As mentioned before, alpha and beta amylase are already in the barley seed. It's just a matter of getting them to work. With amylase, it requires calcium ions for it to activate. And as it is activated, it randomly catalyzes the hydrolysis of alpha-1,4 linkages. Though not near major points or non-reducing ends of amylose or amylopectin. With this, alpha amylase breaks down the starch linkages into more simple sugars such as dextrins, disaccharides or oligosaccharides, maltose and glucose molecules to have them dissolve into the warm water and turn it eventually into wort. Alpha amylase is also used after malting and mashing during fermentation process in light beers only as it is known to help increasing the yield of carbohydrate that can be fermented. Controlling how amylase does its job can play a very, very, very crucial role in the quality of beer, depending on the amount of amylase active and the amount of starch that's there able to react. It determines the percent alcohol that will come of it. So the higher the concentration of sugars in the wort, the higher concentration of ethanol that will be pr produced and vice versa. The lower amount you have, the lower percent of alcohol you get. So with the two amylase enzymes, alpha and beta, they're both required uh, for different temperatures to function. So the optimum temperature and pH level for beta amylase is roughly 62 degrees Celsius and 5.5 pH, while alpha amylase is roughly 74 degrees and a pH of 5.2. Since they are used at the same time, they are both able to work, but depending on the set temperatures the company is using, uh, one will be more efficient than the other. So we can't forget the other enzymes involved, but right now a lot's gone by. I'm going to put a quick summary of what alpha amylase and beta amylase can do on screen. Pause the video if you need to write this down if you haven't already, and then we'll continue in roughly two seconds. So pause the video now. Okay, I hopefully you got this down. If not, just go back. Uh, so we can't forget the other enzymes involved. Um, one of them is called beta-glucanase, which I mentioned before. It is essentially one of the other most important 
enzymes of the brewing process. Uh, a lot of the times, beta-glucanase is sometimes added as an extra step to make the beer more clear, as beta-glucanase helps in breaking the turbidity uh, system for hydrolyzing the beer haze, uh, which essentially proteins bonded to polyphenols, uh, such as blue, I mean, beta-glucanase and starch. So it is optimum pH, I mean, its optimum pH temperatures value at roughly 6 pH and roughly 45 to 50 degrees. But it does nature at 60 degrees Celsius, Celsius for the uh, optimum temperature as well. So you have a little bit of leave room to test what the effects of having it higher does. Next, we have protease, which is a type of enzyme that catalyzes the hydrolysis of peptide bonds in proteins. It is used for brewing and has many different benefits, but most importantly are these two. The digestion of protein for clarification and phallization of melting. With protease, it increases the solubility of the proteins that are available to react with so lowers the viscosity of the beer. Uh, protease develops good conditions for yeast growth by satisfying the availability of free amino nitrogen, which is necessary for yeast growth. During the process of mashing, it is also used to help soften the kernels by hydrolyzing the cell wall protein, leading to the exposure of starch to the mashing enzymes, and accordingly, better mashing and wart fermentability. Protease kit must be used carefully, very, very carefully, as if you use or administrate too much protease, it may affect the quality of the foam, which is very desirable in most beers uh, you see on TV, that beers always have that foam, um, especially the high-quality ones. But the reason you have to be careful with this is because if you have too much protease, it can cause degradation and foam instability, which, as I said before, most people desire with their beers. So another enzyme typically used is called alpha acyl the, the thing we said that we were going to call it the ALDC, I'll put the name on screen, of course. Uh, so with the mass production of beer, you want to be as time efficient as possible if you're mass producing it in liters. I don't know what's above liters. Gallons, I don't know what's above that. But whatever's above that, kilo, kiloliters, kilogallons, I'm not too sure. I'm not, oops, I'm not a scientist. I'm a student. I probably should know this, but that's, that's, that's besides the point. So... Since you're mass producing this, you're producing tons and tons, not literal tons, but a lot of it per day, and you want to utilize the time that it takes. So with this enzyme, it helps reduce the fermentation time without disrupting the natural quality of the beer itself. Uh, here, here's the unit. Uh, the use of this enzyme is used at 1 to 5 grams per hectoliter of wort when it is used in the initial stage of fermentation. So if you're adding the... Uh, wort, the boiled wort, to the fermentation area, you're going to add the ALDC to it at the same time, or you can also do it after the stage of fermentation to help it cool faster, I'd imagine, well not not to cool faster, but as it's cooling, it produces more as well, um, when it's doing this, you would add 0 0.4 grams to 1 gram per hectoliter. And with this, you are essentially just speeding up the process in not a natural way, but a partially natural way, as you know, most enzymes aren't man-created. Another enzyme that is frequently used is essentially with the amylase uh, from barley, but it's called amyloglucidase. Um, it essentially does the exact same job as amylase, but it breaks down the starch and simple molecules of glucose during the mash phase, as well increases the content to be able to ferment, ferment later in the process. Um, that, this enzyme is a bit difficult, though. Um, it's not called uh, what you would call amylase. It's a, called an exoamylase, which essentially cleaves... Cleav can't say that word, cleavages the bonds of the residue of amylose and amylopectin, which amylase cannot do as it only uh, cleavages and breaks down the inner bonds as said before. So it essentially utilizes every single part of the starch, not the starch, the amylose and amylopectin 
that are there. Uh, it's not leaving parts of it left in the barley or in that general floating part of the water. It's break, broken down as well to dissolve in the water so that it can be turned into wort as well. Therefore, you have more beer being produced. It's cost efficient, I would imagine. Now, the final type of enzyme we're going to be talking about um, is basically your view of amylase, but this one is called fungal alpha amylase. Um, it is also used, but probably not what you think. Um, it is essentially another form of amylase, as I said, but you can tell by the name it is produced in a different way. It is produced by Aspergillus orzei. I'll put that word on screen so you can write it down, which is a type of fungi. It can be produced from that and taken and put into either the mashing or the fermentation stage, as well as help break down starch to help speed up formation. So with this, we have gone through the complete process of beer making and the enzymes that are used to essentially make beer. Without these enzymes, you would not have the final product of beer. You would probably just have a bunch of of hot water with barley seeds in it, which no one wants to drink. So with this, we have all the columns back on screen, hopefully, if I remember to do that while editing. You have the six or seven stage process, the different areas, the different tanks the wort is traveled to, seven, not seven, six to nine processes of milling, mashing, and all that, and then finally the enzymes, the roughly seven to six enzymes that you can use in the beer making process. Now, if you're my teacher watching this, you can click off now, but since this is going to be uploaded to YouTube, I'm going to do a quick outro. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this did help you in your research or your school project. If you're going to use it for your school project, make sure you don't copy the entire video. Um, take a certain parts, make sure you cite it. Uh, this project isn't very hard. If you do the research, you have good sources. I promise you, you'll be fine. I'll link all my sources in, down in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to TDM Productions for more videos like this as my grade 12 biology class continues. Maybe I'll do more. We're doing molecular genetics next or as well right now as this video is being uploaded. So I can cover some of that if this video gets good responses. Anyways, have a good one, good luck on your project, take care.